Bradley are over here at the Norfolk Broads Cottage is really flowering beautifully. Now in late July, it's cut hard back every year this because we've got roses and quite a few other plants planted on this quite narrow border along the southern edge of the cottage but at this time of year just let this budlia come into full flower because it attracts these beautiful visitors. They're late this year, normally it would have been a full two to three weeks earlier but they're playing catch up now and there's plenty of them enjoying the nectar on this and the other flowers in and around this cottage garden this time of year. The Queen of Sweden rose flowers between now and December almost continuously if she's deadheaded. This has formed quite a tall plant now. Probably going to cut this hard back to around two foot this year try and get it better self-supporting and to put a stake in to hold the moderately flimsy growth but look how much there is. This really is a vigorous growing rose and such a pretty one. Beautiful bowl shape, lovely deep colours. This flowering pea on the front of the cottage has had an absolutely marvellous season. Really benefited from the extra rain and moisture that's had around its roots. It's normally suffering from drought more than anything but just look at the bud coming on on this and we haven't been here to deadhead this at all. So it is forming quite a bit of seed as well as you can see here. But despite that climbing up through the wisteria to around 12 feet falling forward and just an absolute massive bud beautiful I've done very well with the geranium in pots along the front of the cottage this year these were overwintered in the greenhouse and put out quite late in the season again because of the frosts oh behave yourself Tobes boats going past on the rivers start of the school holidays and the river's particularly busy which they hate but the geranium's doing really well lovely sunny position here F managing to get across and feed them once a week and they're just really rewarding us beautifully as is that hollyhocks on the corner second year of growth now did really well last year multi-stemmed this just look at that spires of beautiful pastel red doing really well here this summer We've got quite a few daylilies flowering in the garden this time of year. This one's on the side of the little cut in the dikes that surround this cottage. It's a bit overwhelmed by the reeds and there is some yellow flag iris in there as well. But nonetheless just manages to flop across the lawn on the side. Rather nice colour. Plenty of flower yet to come on on this one. There's a couple of others to show you in the garden as well. This yellow one was a new addition last year from the Reps Garden Centre. Lovely pure daffodil yellow buttermilk really. Lovely colour. Just getting going here. And the one behind it, I think is probably a repetition of the one we've just seen. It's been divided. Probably originally started in this border. Quite a large clump of that here. Lovely coloured flowers. And above it. Really nice, tall, yellow, upright, which is mirrored with the blue strife in the quite shady corner going back on the side of the boathouse. These little asters are growing nicely this year again. They're quite big compared to previous years. The moisture's meant they're a good six inches taller. No colour on them at all, but in a couple of months these will be covered in blue flowers and give us that lovely autumn blast in this border. Quite a bit of weeding to do in here. Rose we put in a few years ago, which is Albertine. It's taken ages to get going in this position. We thought it would be much quicker than that, but Albertine is not a particularly vigorous growing rose. You just see the first bits of flower and a stem going up behind it. In the foreground, single surviving giant allium, which was moved from the lavender borders last year because they look so out of place. We bought these thinking they were going to be around three feet and actually they're more around seven 
at the base is not particularly attractive things to look at so we thought they'd be better at the back of a herbaceous border like this but of the seven or eight we moved only one has actually survived more asters on the front here and again further clumps on the end here under this rather spectacular rose which keeps us flowered right the way through till the early frosts.